Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first installment of our Acadiana Business Resource Webinars. These webinars are brought to you by business resource partners from across the Acadiana region, including One Acadiana, LIDA, Opportunity Machine, the Downtown Development Authority, the Louisiana Small Business Development Center at UL Lafayette, Acadiana Workforce Solutions, the United Way of Acadiana, and other local chambers and economic development offices, including the Acadia Parish Chamber of Commerce and Vermilion Economic Development Alliance. We have come together to support Acadiana's business community, particularly our small businesses, in response to COVID-19 by hosting a series of webinars on timely and relevant topics. Today's first installment of our Acadiana Business Resource Webinars includes two parts. At the end of each part, once our presenters have completed their presentation, we will use the remaining time for Q&A. As you have questions, please enter them into the chat bot, which can be accessed using the chat bubble icon. We will be recording the questions as we go. If we do not have time to get to your question during today's webinars, we will follow up with you as soon as possible afterwards. We will also compile a list of questions and answers to share with everyone. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Heidi Malosso, Director of the Louisiana Small Business Development Center at UL Lafayette for a presentation on disaster loans and other SBA resources. Heidi. Good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Heidi Malosso. I am the Director at the Louisiana Small Business Development Center at UL Lafayette. We are a resource partner of SBA, and in these unprecedented times, we are called to assist with disaster efforts to inform, educate, and help with any process that we can facilitate these loan process. Next slide, Andre. Um, this is just a declaration from the administrator of SBA, just giving that paramount of what's going to happen with this loan process. Next, next slide. So. The economic injury disaster loan basics, who's el eligible to apply? Pretty much um, anybody, any small business, agricultural cooperatives, aquaculture business, and most nonprofits organizations are um, able to apply for this loan. If you can feed it or water it, um, you will be assisted through the farm cooperative with the USDA. So that kind of tells you who can apply for it. And this is a working capital loan, which we'll get into another slide. And who, well, who's directed the affected disasters? Pretty much everything at this point. I think all states are going to uh, be able to be declared as a disaster. And then any type of business that is directly or indirectly related to an industry will be able to ap uh, apply. And if you can see the example at the bottom, a manufacturer of a widget may be eligible, but also the wholesaler and the retailer of the product as well. So you'll see uh, scenarios like this where a, in a triangle, all business uh, operations will be able to apply for this loan. Next slide. So what is the criteria for this loan um, for COVID-19? Applicants must have an acceptable credit history to SBA. They're not going to at any point name a credit score that will apply because, of course, a 620 may actually be something different um, across the board. So you're never going to see a credit score in writing. So everyone is still encouraged to apply for this loan, and that can be flushed out with a loan officer at a later time. SBA must determine that applicant businesses have the ability to repay this loan. Um, it, it wouldn't be in your best interest to be able to take this loan if you can't cash flow it. So loan officers will be looking at cash in and cash out based on the information that you submit. Um, and of course, on the eligibility, all the businesses must be physically located in the declared parishes that have suffered from working capital losses due to this disaster. Next slide. So the terms of the loan, how much can I borrow? This loan is going to go up to $2 million and you'll be working with the loan officer. Um, there's not going to be a blank that's gonna say, this is how much I'm going to get. It's really gonna be based on the documents that you submit and then also uh, what you're going to be able to uh, declare based on that profit and loss statement and past taxes. 
Um, interest rates for the disaster in this time are 3.75 for small businesses, and uh, which up to 30 years. And then um, on nonprofits, I don't think it states it on this one, but it's 2.75 for nonprofits. Eligibility for working cap capital loans are based on size. Um, if there are any um, interested parties that may be on the larger side, we're going to refer to the Census Bureau of determining whether you are a small business, and it's either going to be on the number of employees that you have or your gross revenue, and we can get you that information at a later, later time. So how can I use these funds? These are working capital loans, so this will be used to pay fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable that you would have ordinarily been able to pay if this disaster did not occur. So the loans are not to replace your profits or to expand, they're, they're really to meet those obligations that you no longer can meet because of this disaster. Next slide. The terms of the loan, so what are the collateral requirements? The unsecured, you can borrow up to 25,000 unsecured. Anything over 25,000, Collateral will be um, will be taken on those loans, and uh, real estate will be considered. And actually, that's probably going to be something you'll meet uh, and discuss with a loan officer because they're not going to decline these loans for not having um, lack of collateral. But of course, they're looking to work with you so that they can get paid back. Just remember that this money is coming directly from the Treasury Department straight into your bank account, and so they want to do what they can to get money in your hands so that you can continue to move on with your business operation. Next slide. So what kind of small businesses can apply? I've had this question yesterday on eligibility, but here's a few um, examples that they are listing in terms of hotels, recreational facilities, charter boat companies, sport vendors, owners of rental property. Um, you may not be able to apply if you are a real estate developer in terms of maybe subdividing a subdivision, but of course, rental property, thankfully, is included in this. Um, also, souvenir shops, travel agencies, and wholesalers. So, for the most part, like I said, beyond that, um, as we said in previous slide, uh, farming operations will not be able to be considered for this. What other criteria is involved? Um, as we said before, a physical presence. You cannot apply with a PO box. Um, you will have to state and prove that you have a physical presence in the disaster declared area. Next slide. SBA's economic funds, like I said, are gonna come directly from the US Treasury Department. There will be no closing costs. There's no closing process. As I said, it's going to be going straight into your bank account. I had a call yesterday from an attorney wanting to assist with Closing docs, there is going to be none of that process. So it's going to be very seamless and um, they do not have to go through any type of bank to do this. And as you can see on the slide and, and where you can apply the disasterloan.sba.gov, in these times, this is the only time that SBA will let you borrow money directly. It's true only in disaster times. So there is no cost to apply. In fact, there's no obligation to take the loan if it's offered. And even if you decline the loan, you're going to have up to six months to change your mind because, of course, our small business owners are suffering right now. And, and to think of taking on an, another obligation is very daunting. And so I can completely understand that, but just apply because then you can make up your mind at that point, because anything can change from this month to the next month. And we'd rather you be in the queue. And like we said, the maximum unsecured amount is going to be twenty five thousand. Um, applicants can have an existing SBA disaster loan, and in fact, those loans are going to be uh, furloughed for now. They, they will be deferred, so that's good news for those that may have been uh, going through other disasters. And then also, you still can apply for this economic disaster, and but another one prior is not going to uh, prevent you from actually taking this one. You just cannot consolidate the loans, you cannot use this loan to pay off, um, to consolidate any type of prior debt that you may have had before. So let's talk about the basic uh, filing requirements. And as of yesterday, some of, the, some of this information has already changed. So completed SBA loan application, you have two forms. You have form five and a fi form five C. 
What's nice, um, I've had lots of questions from sole proprietors. Yes, sole proprietors can be, um, can apply for this loan. It's just the difference of filing a different form from a corporation or an LLC. So a, a form five is going to be what you fill out if you're an LLC, S Corp, corporation. And a form 5C is going to be the form that you fill out as a sole proprietor. And when you get into the loan portal, you'll see once you indicate that you are a sole proprietor, there will be a chance for you to be able to um, switch over to the two forms. Also, the tax information, the authorization from the IRS 4506T, as of yesterday, you do not necessarily have to have this in order to go forward with the application. They will collect it to you, from you at a later time, but you, this will not hold up your application if you don't complete the 4506T. So keep that in mind um, as an applicant. And they will need it from um, all principals and affiliates, uh, other companies that you have. Complete copies of the most recent tax returns. There again, as of yesterday, if you do not have recent tax returns, go forward with your application. It will not hold up the, the application if you have not completed your taxes or you have incomplete data. So that's good news for those that may not be organized at this time, and it gives you a little bit more time at, to be able to submit this, or a loan officer may ask for this information at a later time. Um, schedule of liabilities, that's a form 2202. Um, if your CPA is preparing your documents, you do not need to use SBA's documents necessarily. They're there for you as a guide. But that schedule of liability is going to be any of those fixed expenses that you have, rent, um, be comprehensive. If you're missing a, a line of credit payment, as comprehensive as you can, the better it will be for you. Um, also, personal financial statement, that's form 413 with SBA. Um, and other information may also be requested um, as you go through the process. But the most important thing is to get in the portal, apply so that you're in the queue. It's going to be a first come, first served basis. So we don't want you to be locked out of this application process. Um, I did have a few questions yesterday about paper applications. And there is a process to apply via mail if that is where you're most comfortable um, route to take. But just know that that will be separate and probably 99% of the applications will be submitted uh, through the portal, and that's going to be the quickest way to um, have your information looked at. Just know that SBA, they're ramping up right now. They're adding more people to help with this process. They are going to adapt to this need um, for small business owners. So they're going as quickly as they can um, to be able to process. And uh, in, in fact, in other states, I've already heard that that they're rolling with this, this process. So um, we're going to get the help we need for our small businesses as soon as possible. Uh, next slide. So other information that may be um, requested, like we said, I had questions about if you have affiliate businesses. As you get into the application, you will see um, an opportunity to add additional companies that you are affiliated with. And uh, as you go through the process, they're looking, they're going to look at all of your information to make a determination because it could be that on your balance sheet of another company, um, you're flush with more capital that could help you in this. This is a subsidized um, it, uh, rate that they are offering. And if you uh, do have um, the means to um, help in this regard, they're going to probably suggest that that might be used, but just know that, um, this is probably an unprecedented time where they're going to be very liberal in helping our business owners, and that's what they want to do. They want to get this money into your hands so that you can meet the obligations that you are missing out because of this disaster. Um, if the most recent tax return, like we said, uh, a year in profit, in profit and loss statement and a balance sheet could replace your federal income tax return if you're not completed with it, um, and a year, a current year to date profit and loss statement would also be very helpful. The more information you provide, um, the more comprehensive you are, the easier it is going to be for a loan officer to make a determination about your um, application. 
Um, also, there is a form uh, that you can also use for your monthly sales figures. Um, we will make that available. This is typically when you're going back for money because they do have a process that you can go back in and request more money if it's not uh, enough to meet the needs. Let's see, next slide. Just to go over ineligible entities, I talked about agricultural enterprises, religious organizations, charitable organizations, gambling concerns are not going to be considered casinos, racetracks. Um, and I'm thinking if there's anything else on that part. Um, and then next slide. So here's some information of how to apply. I'm hoping most business owners have taken a look at it, but this is the URL, the uh, disasterloan.sba.gov forward slash ELA will get you directly into the portal. Like we said, paper loan applications can be downloaded um, on the website. And then they, there is an address included if you do choose to um, go snail mail as well. Uh, disaster loan information, one of the things on a conference call yesterday, if you uh, forget a password or, or you have trouble, you're going to have to use the 1-800 number if, if you can't get help through some of the resource partners, but there is a 1-800 number and that SBA um, disaster customer service at sba.gov for emails. They're going to do everything possible to facilitate this, to get you that help, but just, just know that everybody is in the same boat and that they have asked and they have stressed that everybody be patient as much as you can. Next slide. Um, as we said, we offer free assistance um, in preparing financial records, projections. Oh, one thing too, on startups, one of the questions we had yesterday was that projections could be used in a startup um, and it could be a narrative that you may have to um, come up with so that we can prove that perhaps you're in the beginning, you took a loan a couple of months ago and you're just starting. Well, we may have to recreate some of your uh, financial records to accompany your um, application, but just know that you can get help through any of SBA's resource partners and as also the resource partners that are included on this call as well. Next slide. I can't stress to get your application in as soon as possible. Check all of your filing requirements. Try to be as prepared as possible. Um, some of the reasons for delays will be missing information. So make sure to complete all filing requirements. Like we said, don't worry about the tax returns and don't worry about um, the IRS authorization. That can be done at a later time. However, if you are prepared, send it. The more prepared you are, the better it will be for you getting that help. Um, if more funds, like I said, there is a process, don't fear that if you can't get everything you need up front, there will be a way to go forward. However, let's be as comprehensive as possible so that we don't have to go back and ask for more funds. And just note, if you are denied in this request, you still are given up to six months in which you can provide new information you can go back to an SBBC to repackage your loan and they will continue to um, reconsider your request as well. And I think that might be the end of the slides, Andre. Yeah, I, I think we leave enough time for questions right now. Yes, thank you, Heidi. So at this point, we have about 12 minutes left for the Q&A. Destin Ortego of Opportunity Machine will be helping to facilitate the Q&A portion. Uh, please continue to enter your questions into the chat box if you're on the WebEx, and we will get to as many as we can. If we do not have time to get to your question, we will be following up after the webinar, and we will be sharing contact information as well. Destin, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Andre. Uh, so the first question we have came from Ann. Uh, or she just wants to clarify, are all the parishes in the state declared disaster locations? The whole state has been declared a disaster, so that's no problem. Um, I think the whole country will be at this point. Uh, the next one comes from Robert. He asked if bars and AG establishments can apply. I have seen nothing that says that a bar cannot apply. Um, I think if anything, if there's any question, please go ahead and submit that application. Um, but at this point, nothing has indicated that a bar could not apply. Then uh, Lori wanted to know how long the other loans will be uh, furloughed. Uh, specifically, they have one from Katrina. 
I want I've, I want to say I heard six months to a year. I, I don't know exactly, but it, it's in that time frame. Uh, then Corey asked if any if one person has multiple LLCs, can each LLC apply? Yes, there's an there's an opportunity within the application to add the affiliate businesses that you have. So once you're in that, I did have um, one client that read it carefully because when you're adding the application, they were actually repeating their same company. There's a if you put that you're affiliated with another company, then you're going to have to provide the information on on each of the companies um, that you have. Okay. Then uh, Anna asked again if uh, there's a way to look at the requirements before you enter the online application process. Yes, all information is on SBA's website. Um, we have been sending it out as well. They can also contact me with any questions or any of the resource partners probably have access to these forms and information. I think it's a good idea to get a copy of um, the application prior to starting um, the process. That way it's not slowing you up. You can gather your information. You're not going to get timed out in the portal and that way you can pr process it as fast as possible. Yeah, and, uh, and I also want to mention and uh, at Lafayette.org forward slash SBA loan, we put together some fairly easy to read infographics with regarding all the requirements that are needed uh, and paperwork and documents that are needed before you fill out the application. Uh, let's see, uh, Corey asked for nonprofits, does the tax exempt designation matter at all? No, nonprofits have to um, upload their tax information. Now that could change, um, but as of yesterday, unfortunately, nonprofits do have to upload their tax information as opposed to for-profit businesses. And uh, Ann posed a really good question regarding nonprofits. So let's say if there's a lack of fundraising opportunities for some uh, unforeseen amount of time, how will SBA evaluate that type of situation? That's going to come from um, the information that you submit, tax returns. Um, there is a chance for a narrative in the application that you can detail. Um, be mindful, in addition to nonprofits, be mindful of seasonality. Um, some companies make all their money in the first half of the year. There is a chance for a narrative that you can explain that. That way, that can that could be considered because, of course, most nonprofits rely on their fundraising efforts to um, to fund their operation through the through the year. But yes, that's all going to be determined on those schedules um, that you submit tax returns, profit and loss statements, any information you can provide to to have that story available for the loan officer. Okay. We have a, a number of uh, questions coming in right now. Let's see. Robert also asked in the SBA loan application instructions, it appears as though affiliated businesses or ones owning or owned by the business applying. Is this not the case? No. I, in fact, I, I had a business owner. If, if they showing on it that you have um, ownership in another company, I'm not going to get in the weeds of that. Those questions, those are something we can do offline, but they do have a, a chance to add that information. Okay. Uh, Todd asked if a business closes, is payroll for employees one of the things employers use for this loan? Yes, payroll is one of the fixed um, expenses that you usually have. Um, and you can include payroll, accounts payable, uh, rent, insurance, a line of credit payment. Um, any, think of any of your regular obligations that you have every month. Uh, Lisa asked if your business suffered a loss last year. Is that an automatic denial? No, I wouldn't say uh, no, because um, this could have been the year that, you know, you've got proof that you were going to be um, reviving that company. I still apply um, because, you know, people do have off years and um, you still can borrow to meet those obligations. However, this loan cannot be used to probably um, pump up a company that was probably already on life support. Uh, but there again, I, I'm encouraging everybody to apply. Let the loan officer flush that out with you um, because this is your, your chance to get that working capital that, that perhaps you were already on a rebound. And there could be um, letters of intent that you could submit. You may have gotten a contract, even though you had an off year last year, that you could also prove that you were going to be re rebounding this year. Uh, Robert wants to know if new businesses less than a year old can qualify. 
Yes, um, we there's like I said, it may be a little bit trickier in having to create some projections, just showing what you may have lost out on. But of course, um, if you've taken a loan and you just started your operations, I mean, you are definitely in a business and maybe a little difficult for a, uh, I'm going to say an organic business just starting up in the last month without a lot of paperwork. But those that have um, definitely started within the year can apply. Uh, Steven started his application, but he made an error in identifying company. Uh, he labeled it as a corporation and it's in fact a LLC. He seems to have trouble backtracking to correct it or start over. He would like you to please advise uh, will this affect his application? No, I, in fact, if that would definitely be a question if he wants to contact me. I've helped a few people uh, get back on track that, that we can take offline and help him. Oh, great. Uh, Jory wants to know what the max number of employees that you can have and at which day do you use to consider this? Um, there is a link from the that we could probably have Andre send out from the Census Bureau um, because some industries it's going to be based on your uh, North American industry classification system. It's either going to be if, if they're larger on the larger side, it's going to either be based on revenue or the number of employees and it's going to differ for all um, next codes. And uh, Todd asked, if there are multiple owners for one company, do they all have to input their personal input to apply? Their personal financial statement? Is that what they're asking? Uh, they just said personal info. If uh, Todd, you'd like to clarify in the chat box. Well, what we could do is I definitely, I, I have that written down from Todd, but we'll find out if it's only 51% that has to put it. But I, I want to say that Probably the more, the better, but if, if they're marginally um, owners in the company, it's definitely going to be based on the 51% for sure. Okay. And he did say, yes, personal finances. Yeah. Personal financial statement. Okay. Uh, Nikki said that uh, they know lots of business owners are reluctant to apply because of credit scores. Do you have, do you know anything about that minimum requirement? There is no score that's going to be stated because a 620 can be across the board could be different for each business owner. Uh, you know, if it's if it's definitely um, questionable, it, it would be something maybe to discuss with a loan officer because you never know, there could be a way that they could work it out. I would still apply um, because at least um, they know that they've tried and anything they can do to keep their business going. But, you know, I, they really aren't gonna publish a, a score, but, you know, if it's something that's, on life support, then, you know, it may be a hard call to get that loan. And uh, two more questions. I know that you mentioned the 5C form, but uh, we have somebody who asked 1099 worker, does that not, uh, does not have a company to register with the Secretary of State, but has an EIN number apply? Um, yes, I, I, I would. Um, I would probably as a 1099, I'm assuming um, they are considered a sole proprietor. I would still apply um, and, and take the sole proprietor route um, using a 1099. Absolutely. If they've got tax records that can support that income, it's definitely something I'm not a loan officer and really this is more informational, but I, I still would apply and let the loan officer flesh it out with them. Okay. And then the last question, are there any laws currently that show the obligations of small business for paying employees for the time at home due to the stay at home order? Uh, there is some information that I've I've gotten um, on that level about you know completely op opposite of SBA. But what we could do is maybe push that out with from Andre that he can send it out to business owners. Um, but that's not going to be contained in the, the SBA information. Okay, that's it for questions. Okay. All right, Heidi, I'm going to skip ahead to your contact information if you can. Great. Uh, And please feel free to reach out to me. We are checking messages, emails, and trying to get as many questions answered. Um, we've been in constant contact with SBA. Uh, so things change, information changes daily. Thank you. And here's the SBA contact information as well. We will be sending out uh, the PowerPoint slides to everyone so you have the contact info. Uh, and once again, if you continue to have questions, we will try to get you those answers as quickly as we can. So thanks again uh, to Heidi for that presentation.
At this point, we will transition to the second part of our webinars, and we're grateful to be joined by several small business owners who are gonna discuss getting your business online, um, ready to sell online. <laughs> uh, I'll hand it back off to Destin at this point, uh, who will introduce our first presenter. Thank you, Andre. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Destin Artigo, the Director of Opportunity Machine for the Lafayette Economic Development Authority. Opportunity Machine is Lafayette Center for Entrepreneurs, providing space for incubation and education content for growing and sustaining businesses. After today's webinar, if you're interested in more strategies on how to pivot your business to be more sustainable during the current economic climate, please sign up at our, for our newsletter at opportunitymachine.org and follow us on Facebook. Uh, I'd like to mention that Lita has compiled a list of resources available to businesses and their employees. Uh, place the links for that in the chat box right now for everyone to see. So that way, it's uh, easy for everyone here. There you go. All right, so I just posted all the links that I'm going to mention briefly. Uh, so that way, it's easy for everyone to read and, and know what they are. Uh, you can find a list. Lafayette.org forward slash COVID. We will continue to update that list as we learn more. Uh, for a list of businesses hiring additional workers to meet customer demand during COVID-19 public health emergency, you can visit our COVID-19 Help Wanted page at Lafayette.org forward slash Help Wanted. If your business is hiring, please let us know the details by emailing jobs at Lafayette.org. And if you're looking for other job opportunities, visit Lita, Lita's virtual job fair at Lafayette.org forward slash jobs where you can find Lita's year-round jobs board uh, and jobs can be searched by category as well. And finally, we have uh, assistance for artists, musicians, and service industry workers impacted by COVID-19 at lafayette.org forward slash assistance. At this time, I would like to introduce our next presenter, Tara Gidgey with Cajun Crate. Tara originally launched CajunCrate.com as a subscription box service, but has since expanded it to a full Cajun supply store run exclusively online. Tara recently launched Local Solutions along with Crystal Rogers. Local Solutions helps Louisiana business owners with e-commerce and other online solutions. So with the effects of COVID-19 continuing to evolve and businesses closing, we've asked Tara as one of OM's e-commerce mentors to present tips that will help your business offer local delivery, uh, pickup, and get online ASAP. Okay, Tara, take it away. All right, thank you, Dustin. Um, so um, I will be get right to it. So um, right now, more than ever, uh, online or retail businesses, businesses of all kinds are having to pivot. Um, gyms are offering things like um, Zoom classes where they're doing workout classes online. Uh, kids are doing school online. Restaurants are switching to family style meals. Uh, gift stores are offering bundles and doing the thinking for their customers. Um, and so uh, what I'm here to talk about today is basically what can you do um, to switch your day-to-day uh, -day brick and mortar business to get online as quickly as possible and serve your customer. Next slide. Uh, so the main tools I'll talk about today um, are Shopify and Square. Uh, these are my top two recommended tools to businesses that uh, don't currently have a website solution to get on as quickly as possible. A lot of retail merchants are already using Square. So if you're already using Square, I would recommend you stick with it and you just activate the web store. Um, it's only $16 a month, uh, but it is free in the month of March. They're refunding all uh, services such as payroll services, uh, website services, and so on. Next slide. Okay, so the first one I'll talk about is Shopify. Uh, Shopify um, will help you get your products in the hands uh, of your to your customers as quickly as possible uh, by creating um, drop-off solutions, shipping solutions, and uh, sidewalk pickup solutions as well. Uh, they are offering virtual gift cards to all plans and customer uh, for all uh, Shopify plans right now. So you can offer virtual gift cards, which would be email to your customers where they can redeem it on the store. This is a good idea for anyone to activate right now because people are trying to show their support uh, for local businesses with gift cards uh, for future purchases. Um, 
as I already mentioned, local pickup and delivery. Uh, as the example I have on the screen, uh, you can create uh, not only different shipping options, but you can create a free delivery. Uh, you can set a minimum. For example, if you spend 25 or more, we will deliver uh, to your door for free. Or you can just set a, uh, a free pickup as well. So customers can still come to your store uh, and pick up, but not shop in your store. Um, so Shopify is now offering an extended 90 day uh, free trial. So that way you'll have plenty of time to move your inventory online as quickly as possible. This is um, can be done as easily as uploading a spreadsheet to your um, of your inventory to Shopify. They have a, uh, a ton of uh, online guides at Shopify. Uh, so they have videos, step-by-step -step guides to make it really easy, along with online uh, phone and chat support 24-7. Uh, um, Shopify is also a great tool because right now everybody's on social media more than ever. And so you can link your products to Instagram and Facebook and do more uh, social media advertising. You can sell through uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, like that as well. Uh, Shopify is also another great tool if you are making a change to your business and you want to offer a membership and so people can pay their membership dues and you offer something digital to them. Um, they also have apps which will allow you to do subscriptions if you need a monthly subscription or um, can put anything on reoccurring revenue. And uh, of course, they also offer digital downloads. So, for example, if you're an artist and you sell posters, but all of a sudden you, you know, are not doing art walks anymore, you can sell digital downloads of your art uh, instead. Uh, or digital, um, if you're a musician and you want to sell, you know, an MP3 of your uh, music instead of a CD or something like that, you can sell it online for a download. Um, so, as I said before, they're doing a 90 day free trial and uh, it's a really great way. It's also drag and drop design. So if you want a really clean looking store, sometimes people, um, the thought of making an online store is very daunting um, because you, I don't know anything about web design. It's very uh, drag and drop and easy to use. Um, anyone can do it um, and there's plenty of help out there that you can seek as well. Next slide. Okay, so the second one uh, I will talk about is Square. So a lot of people are very familiar with Square. It is a free point of sale system, uh, which makes it a great solution. Um, and they're doing lots of things to help people um, get their products out there faster um, for you know this COVID nineteen relief. So now everything that you sell online on Square, you can activate your web store. There should be a button when you log into Square that says, you know, bring your products online. You can select or deselect products that you want to sell online. Um, so it's automatically going to integrate with your inventory. Uh, so if it sells online, it sells out of your store, et cetera. Um, you can have order management um, and customer directory in there as well. You can now promote digital gift cards uh, where people can buy gift cards to your store or business online um, and it would be emailed to the gift recipient. Um, and then they have now activated a sidewalk and pickup um, option and delivery will be rolling out later this week. Um, they also have something on their delivery, which you can schedule for later. So in the example I've shown here, um, you can schedule uh, when you would like to pick up, uh, the customer can schedule when they would like to pick up that item. And uh, this can all be controlled by you. You can set a pickup date. So if you wanna have like office hours where you will be there for your customers to pick up, you can schedule that in your back end. Uh, this is also, uh, very easy uh, to do. It's they have a ton of documentation and videos on how to do it online. Uh, Square also offers loyalty programs as well. 
uh, things like payroll. Um, they have email marketing built in as well. So it really is uh, your one stop shop if you're trying to do something very quickly and user friendly. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Uh, before I move on, I do want to mention that uh, before jumping ship, definitely check with your current point of sale provider. Uh, they may be offering any um, something that I'm not aware of for uh, COVID-19 relief. I do know some retailers in the area use a program called Lightspeed, and I did learn that they are offering 2% credit card uh, processing right now, which is a very low rate, along with three months free of a uh, web store. Uh, so some other things to remember if you're selling online, uh, definitely communicate with your customers, uh, reassure them uh, via email, uh, let them know about your supply chain, let them know, um, you know, what you're doing as a business to keep uh, your employees safe, let them know what you're doing, um, you know, to help serve them, uh, let them know your hours if you're closed, just make sure to communicate maybe more than you were before, um, just so that way um, you're always on their mind or you're in front of them. Uh, social distancing does mean that there are more people on social media. So make sure all your social media channels are linked uh, back to your website and always make sure to post stories on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but make sure you are engaging with your customers. Uh, don't just sell them, get to know them. Uh, this is a great opportunity to give them a behind the scenes look, uh, get them get them to know the people uh, behind the brand and um, give them thanks. Uh, make sure you're showing your loyalty to your customers um, because it does go a long way. And, and just remember they are going through this too. So this is something that you have in common with your customers. Um, and they are um, definitely gonna be understanding about uh, any type of delays or changes, uh, or at least they should be because this is a um, global problem. Um, you can also use support chat channels like Facebook mes messengers um, with Square or uh, Shopify, as I mentioned before, to answer questions online. Uh, you know, 90% of the world is on Facebook or 90% uh, of America is on Facebook. So I would definitely use uh, Facebook as a great uh, support channel is an easy way for your customers to get a hold of you. Next slide. Um, and last, we have uh, online marketing. So right now is really the time to invest in loyalty. Um, you know, there are lots of loyalty programs out there, uh, but definitely make sure you are reaching out to your current customers more than trying to get uh, new customers. Um, now would be a good time to invest in customer service. Uh, like I said before, you can definitely use chats through Facebook, but if you're having a lot of online uh, business, there's a bunch of apps out there like Zendesk um, that have chat support, email support, and just make sure you are um, getting back to your customers as quickly as possible so you don't leave them in the dark. Uh, trust is huge in the online industry. You definitely want to build trust with that customer. And now that your uh, customer is online more than ever, you want to make sure they're still shopping with you. Um, and then uh, shift your paid ad spend uh, to ac uh, from acquisition to retention. So again, just focus more on uh, keeping your current customers. And uh, this is a survey uh, that is going on daily basis with uh, Clavio, uh, an email solution that I definitely recommend if you don't already have an email solution. Clavio is a great uh, one to look into. But um, less brands are spending on ads, but ad views are going up. More people are online. So if you can afford to do um, Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, Ads are being viewed more than ever right now, um, and it's a good way to get in front of your customer. Um, and then lastly, um, 
the, you know, since you're going to be online so much, uh, make sure you're communicating with your employees as well. Uh, Slack and Google Hangouts are uh, some of my favorite ways to communicate with employees. Uh, Slack is a, a chat channel where you can get uh, thoughts and ideas organized um, and, you know, do group calling. And then, of course, Google Hangouts as well um, are just great tools that are free out there. So that way you can uh, chat with your, your team. Um, and again, if you, if you need uh, assistance on any of this or have questions, you can reach out to us at local solutions, but there are plenty of uh, Shopify partners out there as well. Uh, Square partners, um, but we really just want to help anyone uh, get through this um, as quickly as possible. And uh, we're happy to, you know, help answer questions as well. All right. Thank you, Tara. <clears throat> Um, if you continue to have questions, please continue to enter them into the chat bot feature. We are going to move on to our next presenters and we'll come back to the Q and a after all of our session 2 presenters have presented. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Anita Bagno with the downtown development authority uh, to introduce our next 2 presenters. And I'm hoping Anita that I've got your audio working. Let us know if you're there. Hey, Andre, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hey, Tara, thank you so much for that great information. I think ending on the online marketing tips, especially about building trust with your online audience, which may have interacted with you more person to person um, before this coronavirus um, season that we're in, is a great segue to our next two speakers. Andre mentioned that my name is Anita Begno, and I'm with the Downtown Development Authority. I represent a pretty small geographic area of Lafayette, but we are a large center of small businesses. Um, and so we have put a lot of focus over the last week of talking to our small businesses, primarily our restaurants who have had to pivot to online sales. Um, and so I have two representatives from downtown uh, restaurants and businesses who are here to share some tips with you about pivoting on the fly during this crisis. These are two restaurant um, representatives. They've been talking to each other and folks in the restaurant industry a lot, but also to small businesses of other types. And I think some of the key lessons and takeaways that they're gonna share with you this morning are not only for restaurants, but for businesses of all kinds who are moving their businesses online because of the current conditions that we're in. Another fact that I think is important is um, the businesses that they represented have opened in the, in the last two years or less. So they're still, technically kind of new businesses, figuring out their customer base, their sales system, um, what works and what doesn't work. And so um, I think they're good examples of learning how to grow their business as a newer business, but also pivoting um, pretty hard right now over the last week. So first we're gonna hear from Stephen Verrett. He's the general manager of Spoonbill. And then next we're gonna hear from John Peterson. He represents uh, Tula Tacos and Amigos um, and Central Pizza and Bar. And he also uh, works with some online um, marketing for different types of businesses. So they both have some recommendations for you. And I think they both want to offer their help offline afterward if you have any questions. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Steven. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, so I'm going to kind of go over a few things, but uh, the main thing I'm going to cover is how to offer your customers a unique experience using technology. Um, I have a background in about 15 years of web development, graphic design, branding, marketing, all that kind of stuff, um, and decided to switch to opening a restaurant. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go over a few things that I've kind of learned through not only just owning a restaurant and owning a small business, but um, also kind of some of that other stuff like branding and, and you know, reaching out to clients and networking and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, so the, the main thing I want you guys to focus on is your brand is your identity. It, you know, don't compromise it. Um, use that to your advantage. That's what people know you for. Um, that is, you know, the biggest thing you have going for you um, is your brand and kind of who you are as a business. Um, use that to stand out as much as you can amongst everybody else. Cause you know, there's a lot of competing businesses um, right now. Um, trying to do the same thing, but, you know, we're in Lafayette, we're a community. Um, we're not all necessarily in competition with each other. We're all here to help each other um, and make sure that we're all doing everything we can 
to, uh, to, you know, make this community strive as much as we can. Um, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Um, so right now, as we, you know, Tara talked a little bit on it, but, um, adapting and pivoting is kind of the, the biggest thing we can do right now. Um, for example, we put our entire menu online, um, and I'll kind of cover some of that more because that's all we could do. We really, you know, we're taking phone calls and online orders because we have to do to go or delivery right now. Um, you know, so for some of us, you know, that might be completely reinventing, reinventing ourselves, which is what we had to do at Spoonville. Spoonville, we had to basically just take uh, our entire business and put it online and to go only. So, you know, that completely changes everything, especially when you have a building that is known for, you know, people come and sit down and enjoy themselves outside or inside or whatever, how it is. Um, you know, call-ins are great and those kinds of things for a restaurant, but, you know, people want to buy online just in general, especially when they're at home and they're being, you know, sort of semi-forced to be home. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, they're going to be on their phones, their computers, at work, anything you can do to get that in front of them with their the device that they're already on um, is probably the most important thing you can do right now. Um, you know, we saw a huge increase in business um, where basically 95% of our sales, once we put everything up online, uh, we're, we're going through our online platform. So, you know, we had rarely had any call-ins. Um, it pretty much just went to majority online. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so getting your online shop is the most important thing you do right now. Um, there, you know, Tara covered a few things, which is uh, Shopify and Square, which are amazing, two amazing platforms. I'm pretty sure, like she said, they have discounts going on. Um, we had the advantage of having a POS system called Toast that um, already had the built-in online functionality. All we had to do is kind of activate our menu, upload photos, all those kinds of things, and we were pretty much done. So I looked out tremendously, to be honest. Um, they gave us a discount, so it was three months free online. Um, to kind of get us through this time. Um, a lot of these places, you know, like there's Shopkeep, Shopify, Square, um, even Google has a place for you to put your products on um, and, you know, create a Google shop, essentially. Um, you know, really just try to do everything you can to utilize all these platforms. Um, we can put together links for you guys. Uh, I know you know, Tara has a few cool things. And then I, I, I have a friend, uh, our, our friends, Denny and Katie, who have Wild Child Wines. They use Shopkeep and they seem to love it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know what the kind of deals they're running, but we can look at all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, your cameras on your phones right now are just as good as having a photographer come in. Um, really, all you have to do is just kind of position everything how you want to you know, make it look and just kind of snap those photos and get that stuff online as fast as possible. Um, you know, as much as everybody was told to put everything to their websites right now, really, or, you know, over the past, right now, you want to focus on getting everybody to your online shop. You want to get them directly to those products, directly interacting with the thing you're trying to sell the most. So for us, for example, we forgoed like our entire website on our Instagram and it just links directly to our food menu. Um, Cause that's what we want people to do. The rest of the stuff that's on our site is not as important as getting them to those products, getting them to access everything they need to, you know, you want them to get to you right now. Um, yeah, be intentional with your offerings. Make sure you're really just kind of uh, giving them the things that you think um, that they need right now. There's some products that you don't even need to upload. You don't need to put on there. I mean, you know, you might have like um, some sort of seasonal things that, you know, are going to sell better right now than some of the other things in your, you know, that won't sell in your retail shop or whatever. Um, so, you know, they're just trying to cover kind of, uh, that kind of stuff. If you want to go to the next slide, you can. So I want to kind of talk about this whole thing. Um, John and I have talked throughout this, our friend, Colin Cormier, who owns pops, uh, and is also partners with John at the, the other two restaurants. Uh, my friend, our crampy who owns social, I've been kind of in contact with all these restaurants, you know, Ross at Gentry supply company, just friends that I have, um, who all have small businesses in town, you know, wine shop all that, uh, at wild child wines. And we've just kind of talked and just, you know, we're all in this together. It sucks. It sucks bad, uh, to be quite honest, but we can do this. I think Lafayette's got such a great community. Um, talk to your peers, talk to people who you think may have been in, you're in competition with. I promise you people are 
more willing to help and listen to kind of each other now more than ever. And I think we need to use that to our advantage and become a stronger city and become a stronger group of you know small business owners. Um, and I think, you know, ask your family and friends for help. If you need help taking photos, I'm sure your, you know, your family and friends will gladly come over and help you do what they can do. Um, so just don't be, a, don't be afraid, like that you're on the, in this alone by yourself, like talk to people, make sure that, uh, you know, you don't sit there and, and try to do this alone. That's pretty much all I have. To say. All right, we'll go ahead right over to John now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was supposed to enter John. Hi, John. Hey. Hey, everybody. Yeah, he's good, good morning. morning guys. So, yeah, he's, he's going to uh, give you guys a good little conversation about kind of uh, what you can do or what, John, like uh, marketing and stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, everybody. So I'm going to talk about a really kind of specific and narrow topic, which is how to structure your messaging in a takeout only world. And obviously, I've geared that more towards the restaurant industry, but you can also take that as an online only world if you're in some other industry. Um, and for the sake of full disclosure, I'll just let everybody know. So, you know, we have central pizza and we have Tula tacos. We, we made the strategic decision already after the 1st week of this situation to temporary close. Tula. Um, central is remaining open for the time being. So. You know, I, I want to start by making the point that even the best messaging in the world can only. Do so much. It's why the information Heidi gave at the beginning is, is so important. Um, so, you know, along with everybody else, we're trying to take full advantage of those resources uh, of our you know, private banking relationships. Tula will be will be back. Um, we think it'll be better than ever. We have some some great uh, improvements in mind. But I just want to make that point to everybody that, you know, let's do our best to make our messaging great at this time. Uh, but there, there's only so much that that can do. I mean, this is, this is, um, an unprecedented situation that's outside of our control. Um, so if you're like us with central and you're doing your best right now to hang in there as long as possible without knowing how long this will last, then thinking about our messaging is important. Um, and I, I really want to highlight 5 things that I think I think are pretty critical towards that. Um, when we're structuring our message and we're deciding what to talk about. We want to make sure it's special. We want to make it clear and simple. Uh, we want to highlight the community right now. We want to seek engagement. And we want to make sure we continue to use our unique voice. Everybody's out there talking right now. Everybody is pivoting to online or takeout only. Um, so it's, it's crowded in a new way. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. So I'll just go through. Five points. So, the 1st thing is make it special um, right now. A lot of people are obviously home a lot more than usual and guests still want to be delighted and surprised. Um, you know, we think that at central, the atmosphere is a big part of the experience. Well, obviously we can't offer atmosphere right now. Um, so we have to find a way through our messaging to convey the feeling that people would normally get when they're in the restaurant or so, you know, in your case, it may be in your retail store, you know, you know whatever. Um, and everyone's bored. So, you know, think deep, make something special, make new twists on things. Um, just be creative next. Make it clear and simple. Um, obviously we don't know how long this situation is, is going to extend. Uh, and a lot of people are making a lot of changes really quickly out of necessity. Um, so as you think about. Converting those decisions into messaging to let your guests know about them. Be careful not to overwhelm with too many options. Don't throw an entire new, you know, uh, amended menu up all at once. Um, there's going to be time. So think about what you have that's special. Highlight them one at a time. Um, highlight those things that are that are easy to communicate. Um, you know, everyone's communicating a lot more right now. So you only get a, a small slice of that attention. So just make sure you use it well. All right, next. Right now, more than ever, and this is always a good idea, but more than ever now, um, let's highlight community. Um, so that could mean showing your team, um, talking about them, telling their story. In the case of a restaurant or anybody with a, with a supply chain, talk about your suppliers, your growers, your partners. Um, we really want to let customers and guests know that they're part of a network that extends further than they may realize and impacts more lives than they may realize. 
And lastly, of course, uh, a time like this, it's really important to consistently be expressing our gratitude to those who are still supporting. All right, next. Uh, seek engagement. I would venture a guess that people are spending a bit more time on social media right now than, than the norm. Um, and so it's a good time to bring customers into your process. Um, just a couple of little ideas, like you could crowdsource a special. Um, you know, if you have, if you have committed fans, uh, they, they know your menu, they'll be anxious to share combinations that they like or, or ideas that they've had. Um, so you can crowdsource those things or ask guests to share their at home restaurant setup. You know, like I said before, we can't, we can't offer our atmosphere right now. Um, but we can have fun with the idea that people right now are having to recreate atmosphere at home and they can have a little fun with that too. All right, next. And finally, just to echo what Steven said, make sure to continue using your unique voice. Um, it's tempting right now in a situation that is very serious to take on a serious tone, but let the CDC use the CDC voice. They can have the serious tone. Uh, you can still have fun. It's okay to do that. Obviously, just be cautious and kind about what you say and how you say it. Um, right now, we have to try to communicate through our online messaging, through social media, what we just can't communicate in person. Um, and so we want to try to convey a little bit of the experience that, that people are missing strictly through our messaging. So we need to um, be thinking about how we can do that. I think that's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tara, Stephen, and John. At this point, we have uh, the remainder of the time for Q&A. Uh, so I'm going to turn it back over to Destin Ortego of Opportunity Machine to facilitate that. Please continue to enter your questions into the chat bot, and we will get to as many as we can. Destin? Sure. So the, the first question I have is for Tara. Um, and uh, Anita asked that uh, a lot of downtown restaurants are using Keep Share POS for, uh, do you have any recommendations for setting up digital gift cards? Uh, Keep Share? Right. Is that what you're asking? Um, I'm not. That's for digital gift cards. I mean, if I'm not familiar with Keep Share, but um, if they don't offer one already, I would just quickly set up a Square account. It's free um, and offer online Square gift cards. And if someone comes in to redeem those, just redeem them through your Square system. But I mean, the money still goes in your bank account and it's a quick, easy way to do a digital gift card. And they can easily be redeemed without having a totally different point of sale system. Okay, so that ties into the next question. Uh, if you already have a website, uh, what app is best to integrate some of the selling services you mentioned? Um, so if you already have a website, but don't have a web store, uh, I would recommend just getting on Square because it's super easy. It's super fast. And you could always just create a new tab on your website that says shop. And, um, you know, check with your current point of sale system to see if they offer linking website uh, services. Uh, but Square would probably just be the easiest and fastest way to get it online. And then, um, and, and Shopify for that matter is easy too, but Shopify could just handle your whole website. Square would be the easiest slash cheapest way to do it fast. And so uh, for any GoDaddy website users to create online store and integrate digital gift cards, would Square be the recommendation as well? Square would be the recommendation. Um, I just built one in an hour um, and I'd never done um, a Square online. I've done plenty of Squares, but not Square online stores. I did one for the first time the other day in an hour. It was super easy for Hawks Boil Up. She now has gift cards that you can redeem online. Um, and you just get all your inventory on there quickly as possible. Squares, Squares and all a great one because it's all in one credit card processor, point of sale, uh, website. And then later on, when things get back to normal, it can easily transition back into your point of sale system. And uh, so for Stephen and John, um, you know, since y'all just transitioned over to a little more digital. Are any of you generating gift card sales already? And if so, what's the percentage look like? 
Yeah, I mean, we uh, we were doing physical gift cards previous to this. Um, and then thankfully our POS system has an online version of gift cards as well. So it was pretty simple to just kind of transition to that. Um, where, you know, again, I'm very thankful for the POS we chose. Um, but uh, we, we're seeing uh, we're seeing not as many as I would hope to be quite honest. Um, but we haven't really pushed the gift card as much as we've been trying to push our kind of everyday selling of food. Um, because just, you know, it's kind of been the most priority for us right now. Um, but, you know, I will tell you this, I'm going to release another kind of push this week on social media for digital gift cards um, early this week. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I would like to see more uh, in general, but I think, you know, getting that out there, if you were to publicize if it's that as much as possible, you would sell it a good amount. Um. I'll, I should have mentioned this in ours, but we have not had the capability to adapt to uh, online ordering and online gift cards as quickly as um, Stephen and some others have, just based on on the POS system that we use. Um, so that's part of why you know I've had to really focus for our businesses on more on messaging. Um, and you know we do sell gift cards and we've continued to sell gift cards, but I don't think that the there's there's really been a significant increase. And I mean. You know, say I don't really think that it's probably realistic to to imagine an increase in gift card sales. That would be um, that would be hugely significant. Um, I think someone who was really pushing them could maybe see like a ten or fifteen percent increase, which which helps. Um, but I, I wouldn't expect that to be a, a, a game changer right now. Great. Uh, so this next question is Lisa posed it to uh, Stephen, but. Uh, after Stephen answers, if anyone, uh, if Tara or John would like to answer as well, uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, so, do you have any recommendations uh, for online help to acquire business for services for service businesses? So, such as legal or medical service businesses. Um, I mean, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of great agencies in town. I I know no, I can't really give you kind of much on that right now where I'm at. Uh, we do have a lot of great you know, uh, online agencies in town that can, can help you with that. Um, out the gate, I have nothing. I'm sorry. I've, I've been so deep into the restaurant world lately that, that those kinds of things are uh, kind of over my head these days. Well, I mean, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat, Stephen, but, but I will say, you know, some of these messaging principles apply across the board. I mean, if, if you're, you look, I mean, it, if you're looking to try to find more business right now, um, think about your identity, think about your brand, increase your messaging, whether through social media channels, through your email channels, um, whatever it is. I mean, these principles apply uh, to any industry. Um, so think of unique ways to talk about your services. Um, think of unique or novel ways to reach your target audience. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to be bold. Don't be afraid to have a little bit of fun with your messaging, as long as you're cautious and kind. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you need to do more of that right now, um, just dig in on your messaging a little more up the frequency and, um, try to, try to dig in to some creativity right now. And, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. So this is the question. I just want to clarify the question is for people who have services that would be normally done in person and how they would bring their business online. Is that the question? Sorry, say that one more time. I'm sorry. Um, the question I just want to clarify is for people that have uh, services like legal services or something like that, that would normally do their services in person, but now are trying to bring their businesses online. Yeah, and they're trying to acquire uh, customers online. Um, I mean, I definitely think it's a, a pivot, uh, but it can be done. Absolutely. Uh, there is a big portion of the medical community that was already uh, making this shift uh, before this situation. Um, you know, building a website with um, just a way to take transactions. Uh, like I said, if you in get set up on Shopify, there's plenty of um, membership um, membership apps. Uh, you can sell slots of time 
and you can, you know, schedule meetings um, and uh, based off of those meetings, take transactions, you know, so uh, it's not face to face, but you can definitely sell your time um, in uh, digitally online and use things like chat services, uh, Zoom calls. I mean, my son, I just signed him up for karate. And uh, now he cannot do karate because that is person to person and more than 10 people. So they're hosting like online classes where uh, our membership went towards a video training for us to show him how to do things at home. And they also have like an online classroom environment to talk about the lessons. So it definitely can be done. Stephen, did you have some that? I was going to say, you know, things like, uh, like Squarespace as well too. There's just, there's just plenty of these, these companies that are, you know, low, low monthly costs, um, that can benefit you right now that don't, they don't, they don't require you to sign up for an entire year. So during this time, I didn't think like what Tara was just saying, like there's services that you can have, you know, you can get that will allow you to talk to people through video or through audio or. Uh, books, lots of time, like there's all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and the most of the, most of them are monthly. So you can, you can keep it past this situation or just get rid of it during that time. Go back to business as usual. You know? Yeah. Another great tool is a uh, calendarly. I can't ever say it right, but it's <laughs> like free for certain features. And like, I think the most advanced portion is $12 a month, but it can integrate with Zoom. It can make group events. You could uh, section your day out in slots of time, uh, whatever 15, 30, one hour uh, increments, and people can go on your website, book your time. Uh, it integrates with Stripe, PayPal, HubSpot, all the things that you're probably already using before. Um, they integrate together, but people can just book you by a slot of time. And all it is is like a simple a plug-in integration to a website, or like you can just send them a calendar invite through an email, and you don't even have to have a you know this published on your website to send people invites. And it also works with SMS. So look into a good SMS tool, or if you already have a customer uh, base of phone numbers, you can send them notifications like, "Hey, you're doing business a slightly different way." Great. Um, yeah, and I, I do want to add, I don't know if anyone, uh, I see Kristen, you just posted a question about cosmetology. Uh, and I, I know that, you know, hairdressers and, and cosmetologists are getting hit hard right now. Um, something that my brother-in-law did as a musician, I thought was really great. He had a, a show set up on Saturday. Obviously, he wasn't able to play that. So what he did instead was set up an event, right? Uh, he had people... They paid ten dollars a piece to register for his online uh, streaming, a live stream of his concert from his home. And whenever he had everyone register, about thirty minutes, an hour, thirty minutes before the show, uh, he went ahead and sent out an email with a private link to a YouTube stream. And so then you could get access to you know the stream. And then what's great about it is that once you're done uh, doing through YouTube, you have that content to share later, or if people had trouble streaming it, they can always access it later once it's been finalized and, and uploaded on YouTube. Uh, and you can keep the link private so that way it's not a public thing and, and people feel like they're getting their, their money out of it. So I don't know, for cosmetologists, maybe you can do webinars that you can charge for, even if it's just a small amount, uh, educate people. Like we talked about earlier, people have a lot of hands now. Uh, and they're needing to do certain things themselves that maybe they paid someone else to do. So maybe figuring out ways to educate those people and then charging them some sort of amount for the education part of it, because that's still very valuable, uh, might be able to help with that. Uh, Robert did pose a question. Uh, I think, Terry, you can probably help out with this. Getting us to link GoDaddy to Square is difficult. Can you discuss the process? Um, okay, so what I would just suggest is, um, have like, just create a, um, a link in your navigation where it's actually not hosted. All right. Okay. And real quick, I need to clarify the, um, it's linking to a GoDaddy domain 
or linking to a GoDaddy website. Can you clarify that, Robert? He said both. Both, okay. Um, well, the linking to the domain, there are step-by-step -step instructions on uh, how to do that. You would have to um, just modify uh, your, a, your A record and your C name, which I know um, does sound difficult, um, but there are like step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, if you wanna contact us at Local Solutions, we can definitely help you uh, assist you with that. But as far as if you already have a GoDaddy website and you just need to put your store online, I would make a um, another tab in your navigation, call it store, shop, whatever, and then just have the, the link point um, to your um, uh, square site. And you don't even have to redirect it to your domain in that, in my opinion, like it'll say uh, whatever your business name dot square dot site. And at this point, like, you don't even have to worry about directing it to your domain name. Uh, so I would hit new tab in your navigation, link the square site, just keep the square domain um, to uh, that navigation tab. So that way you can just get your products online as quickly as possible and you can worry about redirecting it to your branded domain later. Yeah, I, would, I would chime in that. I would just say, just get them to the store, like as fast as possible, really. Um, don't worry about it looking pretty as far as a domain standpoint. Just make sure that they can get there and access what you're trying to get them um, easily and uh, as quick as possible. Yeah. On Square, there's a publish. When you go to publish your website, uh, there is uh, three options. Buy your domain from Square. Uh, use your own domain and then use a square domain. Just use a square domain. It's, you know, it's gonna say your business.site or .square.site, but just go for that right now. It's the easiest and quickest way. Great. Uh, so Catherine just posed the question of getting better at doing Facebook Live. Does anyone have any recommendations on uh, how to get better? Catherine, if you wanna specify a little bit, are you talking about just presenting in general or the content, thinking of types of content? While we wait for Catherine to respond to that, maybe we can just, uh, if anybody has any suggestions for you. Yeah, you know, what I would say is like, we, I mean, I think there's kind of a thing right now where everybody is on their phone um, just cause either they're bored or they just passing the time. Um, they're on social media more than ever. You know, really creating some interesting videos, whether it's little fun videos or, I mean, we just did one for our takeout thing that was pretty fun to make and, and to keep it lighthearted. Um, but, you know, just showing processes of how your business works or showing off products in your store or, um, you know, kind of doing like some little reviews on your product or, you know, like I watched a video last night about just kind of like for restaurants, like taking people through your dining room, through your kitchen, going through your talking to your staff and kind of interviewing each person and how, you know, they're dealing with this situation right now, or, you know, trying to keep it fun. Why, how you're trying to keep it fun in your workplace, like whatever you're trying to do really just kind of show people um, a little behind the scenes take of everything um, and use video to do that. I mean, it's great to show photos and all that kind of stuff, but I think people, want to hear from you um, want to kind of have, that's a way for them to interact with you in, in a different way than just a photo can do for you. Yeah. I mean, I'd also add just don't, don't be afraid of making it perfect or of mistakes. Um, people like to see realness and people don't mind mistakes and misspeaking and um, those sorts of things. So, you know, if part of the question is how do I know if I, content is good enough or if I'm ready to do it, just start doing it. Yeah, and, and I would like to add, um, this is like, don't worry about how great it looks, you know, like try to stay true to your brand as much as possible, but just get online. Um, I'm really excited to see all these businesses getting online that I've wanted to be online forever already. I hate that it's having to happen this way. Uh, but just know, like, once, you know, things get back to normal, keep your online store. This is always a great way 
uh, to reach your customers. You make yourself more accessible uh, to your customers. Uh, we are already a very online community. Um, so this is really good. Also, a lot of people, especially brick and mortar retailers um, always have a certain feeling towards Amazon because uh, Amazon is the big box competitor. Right now is the best time to get your products online because Amazon is not accepting any more shipments inbound that are not essential. So if you sell a non-essential product, that product will be going away or not shipping as fast on Amazon uh, because they are shifting their focus right now to shipping only essentials uh, like food and household products. So get your products online because your customers still need your products. Um, I'll add to like, if you have, like, if you make any kind of handmade goods or things that, you know, are personal to your store, you can sell that stuff on Etsy and it not only will be sold locally, but throughout the entire world. So, you know, getting stuff on a, a mark, uh, you know, a platform like Etsy and stuff like that is is going to help your business just for the long haul but not just for the long haul but you know for right now too is, is you can use etsy as a shop um if you do sell you know goods that you make you can't sell like a product that you buy from someone else uh, but you can sell anything that is created by you um you can sell on etsy and it's a really cool uh platform too and y'all use ebay i can't tell you how much you know, carries root. I sell on eBay for some people reason people want to buy it through the platform eBay. Um, uh, but it is a great place, um, uh, to, to sell your products is eBay. Uh, Etsy is another good 1, but, uh, definitely just look at any marketplace. Uh, that you can sell your product on, uh, because that's just more places people will see you. Yeah, I'll, um, back real quick to the video. Portion of it, I'll share a little bit of or a tip from Ronnie Hess, Rally Marketing, that he always likes to talk about whenever it comes to doing live videos or videos in general. Uh, think about how many people now are online and how many people are looking at your content utilizing their phone. How often are they going to turn their phone sideways to watch a video that's horizontal? Uh, so while vertical video may not, at one point in time, wasn't the preferred <laughs> form of video content. Uh, vertical video definitely now is the more convenient, uh, especially when people are looking at it on their phone. So just something to keep in mind whenever you're creating video content. Don't be afraid to make it vertical because a lot of people are just naturally looking at their phone that way. Um, so one, uh, two more questions. One, I think is really important to talk about specifically whenever it comes to offering discounts. So I need to pose a question of there's a couple of restaurants that are offering 25% off retail price gift cards. Uh, do you think that could help with sales or would that cause any issues in the long run? Um, is this an open question? I, 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 okay. I think, um, you know, that's something I've thought about and kind of struggled with in this situation. I, I tend to think that that can cause more trouble in the long run. Obviously this is an open ended situation. We're not really sure how long this will last. Um, I turn to how critical the information from Heidi was, how critical your, um, your individual banking relationships can come in right now, but you, you do have to be careful with discounting gift cards, um, you know, for the obvious reason that your, when those start coming back to you, um, they're not going to fully cover the the cost of the goods that you're giving away uh, on that credit. So just remember that selling gift cards is, you know, um, deferring. Um, so, you, you know, if you can do forecasts for that and maybe I, I'm personally, I'm opposed to it to, to give you a short answer. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing we've done in the past is we've done like, if you buy $50, you get a $10 gift card. Um, and that's like the most I would probably do in a quote, discount. Um, it, it is hard, like John's saying, it's hard to kind of, you have to remember that 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 money isn't, it's, yeah, you have it now, but it's gonna take away from your stock later. Um, so it's it's gonna, it's gonna be great for the moment, but in the future, it may come back to bite us, you know? So I, as much as we wanna do that, it's, it's hard to kind of, from a standpoint, make, like, Make, make sense of that. 
Um, going back to um, the the video uh, real quick and behind the scenes, uh, show people your process, uh, especially in the restaurant industry. Uh, the other night, the Fizos had a great uh, live video on how uh, their pickup line for crawfish was set up, um, and it had an amazing turnout. Um, but it was really it. It really drove people to go there because they got to see the process um, and it, it made them feel like, oh, wow, this is the place I want to go to. It's really set up. It's really organized. So uh, definitely be showing people your processes if you need some great video content. Great. So we have five minutes left. I'd like to uh, no more questions. I'd like to leave it open for presenters to give any final thoughts on anything they may have forgotten to mention. Here, we can start with you. Um, the only uh, uh, other piece of advice I'd really recommend is um, get online, of course, as quick, fast as possible. Uh, make it pretty later. Uh, always be working on it, but get on, get your products in front of your customers, offer them, pick up delivery, get creative. And then um, don't forget to work with other businesses. Uh, right now is not the time to talk about competition. Try to talk uh, collaboration uh, because you know, that business uh, goes back and forth. And so now it's a really great time uh, to collaborate with other businesses, try to think outside the box, see if you can help uh, lift each other up in, in this time and the business will come back to you. Thank you, Tara. Steven? Oh, yeah, I mean, echo what you said. I mean, really, really just you know, the, the main thing that we want to focus on is, is, you know, getting your stuff in front of people as fast as possible, whether that's, you know, your online store, video content, social media content, um, getting yourself out there to let them even know that you're open, what you're able to do right now, um, how you're able to serve them, you know, interact with them through comments. Like if they post, if you post something, they comment on it, make sure you're interacting with those people, answer their questions, anticipate their needs through those questions, um, link to, products that maybe they're looking for that you can kind of tell through the question they're asking about, like, hey, maybe you want to check this out or whatever it is. Um, really just try to do what you would normally do when they come into your your space, um, interact with them the same online, just try to anticipate their needs, be there for them and make sure that they're getting exactly what they want by the time they, um, they're they done kind of interacting with you and, you know, try to keep them coming back with those interactions, with that relationship you're you're kind of creating the same kind of experience they would have or trying to create the same kind of experience they would have coming into your, you know, whether it's a dining room or a retail shop or whatever it is, um, keep that relationship. Great. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, and John? Still there, John? I think John had a cut out early. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I'm still here. I, okay. I forgot to unmute myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, look, I don't want I don't want to end by seeming to strike a negative tone here because I'm, I'm very optimistic about you know how we'll all get through this together. Um, but I, I really I do want to encourage people to um, right now more than ever be data driven in your decision making. This may be a period of time that ends up being more about mitigating losses um, than trying to maximize revenues. Um, and th those two things can go hand in hand. And if you decide to uh, keep operating and keep going, then absolutely do everything you can um, to pivot as well as you can to sharpen up your messaging as much as you can. But please just um, pay close attention to all the resources that are available to you to all the information that Heidi gave. And uh, let's just try all, you know, individually try not to find ourselves in a, in a, in a mode of frantic action. Um, let's make sure that we can uh, remain thoughtful, remain data driven in how we decide how to proceed um, and protect ourselves as much as we can, because we are going to get through this at some point. And we just want to make sure that each of us and each of our businesses and our employees and our partners and everybody else is in the best position possible when that time eventually comes. So. That's that's all I'll mention in closing. Thank you. Uh, and super one last thing, we are going to try and talk about some of these things in future webinars, hopefully. But 
uh, Robert did pose the question of uh, mentioning a little bit about saving money. Um, everyone has different costs. So I think this is a great time for everyone to really sit down, look at your costs, make sure you understand where your money's going. I mean, all the way to the final details of, you know, you have pencil, uh, you know, and just understanding where that's going, how much it is, and do you need that expense right now? Or can you pause it? Can you save it for, you know, another time? Uh, so that way you're saving as much money as you possibly can. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, I'll throw it back over to Andre for closing. All right, thanks, Dustin. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you to all of our presenters and our participants. We will be sharing the video and other materials from uh, today's webinars, which you can access as soon as they're available at oneacadiana.org backslash COVID-19-resources. And all of the partner organizations who made today's webinars possible will be sharing the video and materials as well. No, uh, it's been taking uh, longer than usual for WebEx recordings to be generated. Um, so it may take a few hours before we can get the video ready, downloaded and re-uploaded, but we're gonna have it online as soon as we can to begin sharing out with folks. We hope today's webinars were helpful and we look forward to offering additional Acadiana business resource webinars going forward. Stay tuned for follow-up emails from us and our partners. Uh, this concludes today's webinar and thanks again.